I think the opportunity in Congo starts with the people. There's no other place in the world that needs more attention than the Congo, but there's also no other place in the world that I've been to with people and communities so amazingly resilient. And many of these people have lived under the cloud of conflict for most of their lives. Today, the roaming civilians of the war in Through this all, you have a population that is extraordinarily hardworking. So if you consider where we are, and you look at the uh, elevation of Lake Kivu, and I would estimate where we're sitting right now is probably 1,800 meters above sea level. This is quite a unique and ideal topography for coffee production. Market opportunities for cash crops, for regional production of food, and also for the local production of food for families here. Mimi Kinangu Emile Tamirabali Batea. Niko Nabibi, Tuko Nabatoto Munani. Bossie Suna Dimaka Cafe, Nagras Yaile Milimo. Tulisomesha batoto vipi. Nitangia mwaka wa 1975. Miaka makumi ine? Tatu na kenda. Miaka makumi ine? Tatu na kenda. Ina ene sulema. Hei. Kazi ya kafe kwa nguvu. Kisha tena ukisha itosha vile, unaenda tena unasaga, unasukula, unamika, 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 leo tena yibiangu. Na kutosha tena ile maganda enye kondani. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's been coffee in this community for 30 years. They haven't received the value for that coffee. Why not? Because they haven't had access to the markets. So we partner with them. We were able to be a catalyst to bring in folks like USAID and Howard Buffett Foundation and say, hey, here's an opportunity to invest in people. Over the last five years, ECI has played a critical role in grant making, uh, in doing advocacy, and doing capacity building of Congolese organizations that are working to solve the, um, the problems and the issues in this nation. In doing this work, we've really engaged with uh, agricultural communities, and we found a way to link cocoa farmers and coffee farmers to high value markets. And with the, um, the confidence of ECI and the, the relationships that ECI has, we were introduced to ESCO. And ESCO Kivo is really the, the cocoa pioneer in Congo and they've created an amazing network of producers that we have faith in. <laughs> After only 18 months from my first visit, we brought out the first container of cocoa from the Congo to the United States and today we're buying hundreds and hundreds of tons from North Kivu. I mean, there's really nothing like seeing a woman from rural Congo uh, carrying her baby, sitting in a room with international buyers and discussing prices. That, to me, is a great success of ECI's work. From a relatively modest investment, farmers' incomes have more than tripled, and they can now afford to send their children to school, put food on the table, and access proper health care. As a result, the world has a new source of high-quality coffee. And when you work in a country where over 70% of the people work in agriculture, um, it became clear to us that um, working together with farming households uh, and enabling them to create their own opportunities uh, was a very impactful way to affect uh, social change. If the women, children, and rural households in Congo are going to be healthy and educated and prosperous, then these communities need to be able to earn more and to have access to better social services. So the Congo Farmer Trust really strives to achieve this by doing two things. One, um, by increasing uh, the incomes for farming households. And second, by focusing on community-led and locally affordable solutions that would allow the most marginalized people, in this case we're talking about women and children, to access the basic school services and be included into the solution uh, making in these communities.
Congo has historically been thought of as the breadbasket for Africa. Maybe it's not that so much anymore, but it could be more so again. I see great potential in coffee to revive Kivu Coffee's reputation. This work is scalable. This work is replicable, and in just five short years, it will have a transformative impact on individuals living in Eastern Congo. 